Proteins have a huge variety of functions in our bodies. Some of them are structural, others um, facilitate certain reactions, and there's just a huge variety. The reason that there's such a huge variety is because their structures vary quite a bit. So what we're gonna do is start from the basics. Proteins are built from amino acids. They are polymers of amino acids. So what is an amino acid? Let me show you a schematic of an amino acid. Um, take a look right up here at the top. This is a generic amino acid. It has a central carbon atom and then it has a nitrogen connected, it has a, a carbon double bonded to an oxygen over here and an OH group. Um, this is kind of the backbone of an amino acid. And then amino acids also have what's called a side chain or a side group. And this is the thing that varies from one amino acid to the next. Um, so over here we have, see this is a different amino acid. It's got the same backbone, but it's got a different side chain. We're representing it with a triangle instead of a square. Okay, so these two amino acids can be joined together. We can join them with a dehydration reaction, just like we've seen before. And the type of bond that forms between them in that case, uh, this is called a peptide bond. Uh, that just has to do with what's being connected on the left and what's being connected on the right. That bond between carbon and nitrogen is called a peptide bond. So peptide bonds can be formed between neighboring amino acids in order to form proteins. Um, once we connect a few amino acids together, we would call it a polypeptide and then that polypeptide will end up folding into a three-dimensional structure based on interactions between the side chains. So maybe this one's polar, maybe this one's non-polar, maybe they don't like to be near each other, so that'll sort of bend this chain into a particular shape. So this three-dimensional structure will start to develop. Um, other things you should know, so the, the sequence of amino acids, so like this amino acid is connected to, to this next amino acid, which is connected to the next one. Um, that sequence of amino acids, that's called the primary structure of the protein. The three-dimensional shape that the protein folds into, that's called the tertiary structure. So primary structure versus tertiary structure. You'll want to have an idea of what's the difference between those two. Let's look at an example. A good example of a protein is hemoglobin. This is the protein that's present in our blood. This is the protein that carries oxygen from our lungs to all of the cells in our bodies. And hemoglobin is a protein. So it has, it has a primary structure. That's just the sequence of amino acids. Each little bead on this string is representing an amino acid. And they're all connected by peptide bonds. And so that's the primary structure, just the sequence of amino acids. All right, so when, um, once this chain is produced, it will, again, it will fold into some sort of a three-dimensional shape. That's what this is showing. And that folding is due to attractions and repulsions between nearby amino acids. Okay, so three-dimensional shape, that's the tertiary structure. This tertiary structure happens to be really good at holding on to oxygen. Okay, so this is a protein that exists in normal red blood cells, and red blood cells are able to carry oxygen because of this. In the case of sickle cell anemia, what happens is this protein doesn't fold quite correctly. And the reason for that is because one single amino acid right there has been modified. It's not the amino acid that was supposed to be there, rather it's changed to a different amino acid. And this changes the attractions and repulsions that take place nearby um, in the protein. So consequently, the tertiary structure is quite different, right? If you compare this three-dimensional shape with this three-dimensional shape, that's very different. This is a sickle cell form of the hemoglobin protein. That in turn makes the red blood cell have a different shape. This is called a sickle-shaped red blood cell, and um, this doesn't do as good of a job of carrying oxygen. So that's an example of, of actually a disease that can result from um, a change in protein structure.